Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check it out Pretending to Grown Up from Jason Anarchy Games. This is for two, or two to four players, take about 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 plus, and Pretending to Grown Up is based on the popular webcomic of the same title in which you are going to be pretending to grown up. You are going to be doing adulty things, which will actually be cards with humorous pictures and text on them as you play a modified version of War with a bunch of other game retwists thrown in there. It is light it is simple it is definitely not 30 minutes but is that a good thing is that a bad thing let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of pretending to grown up so first and foremost we got a handy dandy rule booklet it's probably seven or eight pages double-sided full of pictures and illustrations and it's very well done and honestly you're not going to need about four of these pages it's just guest cards strategy credits introduction so it's very well done and it should have you up and running in no time at all so in pretending to grown up, you are going to try and get 12 grown up points. The first person to get to 12 grown up points is going to win the game. You get grown up points by squabbling with other people, much as in real life. So let's go with the components and then we'll get into the gameplay. So first, you are going to get this little daydream token right here. Uh, this will get passed around the table. You can take the action on your turn to take this and it will give you plus one to all of your stats when you decide to squabble with people. Next, you're going to have cards, 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 and more cards. Now, I do want to mention that I have a bunch of the guest artist cards mixed in here as well. So if you do notice any cards that have different artwork that's not similar to all the rest of the artwork, that is why. So the cards are going to look something like this. And there's two kinds of cards in the game. We'll go over these ones first, the blue ones. So first, it's going to be something that you will most likely do when you are a grown-up. Multitask, skull scourge, discover superfood, you know, same clothes two days in a row, things like that. Now, at the bottom, it's going to have some flavor text, which will make you laugh, or it might not make you laugh. It depends on what your sense of humor is. But the most important aspect of the card is going to be on the left over here, which these are the attributes. There is time, there is money, and there is energy, because once you get to be an adult, what else actually matters? And these are how you're going to win squabbles by having the highest number on a card. So someone's going to have a squabble, they say, I have more money than you, and then they'll most likely play down a card that has a high money amount. Or they might be bluffing, which is another aspect of this game that people can potentially do. So let's show you what you're going to do on your turn, because on your turn, you only get one action, and there's only three actions you can take in the entire game. So, everyone at the beginning of the game is going to dealt five cards. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one other type of cards, which are the Unipegasaurus cards. These will give you special abilities. They will let you do special things. They will break the rules of the game. And they're all just read the text on the card. So, never give you up. So, it's a Rick Rolls thing. Unipegasaurus allows you to change any one score into a 10. Use along with any grown-up card. He's no stranger to points. So, there you go. They all are going to have their own unique special abilities. And they're all one-time special abilities. So... On your turn, here's what you can do. First thing you can do is you can take the daydream token. Boom. That's your turn. You just put it right there in front of you. Hooray. Now, other people can take this on their turn, but if the daydream taken token is taken two turns in a row, so let's just say that I take this, and then this person decides just to be a jerk to take it, instead of going to him, it actually would go in the center of the table. So if it's taken two turns in a row, it just goes back to the center. But other than that... Uh, it's going to stay in front of me until someone else decides to take it. The next action you can take on your turn is that you can draw two more cards, which they call, I think, taking on responsibilities. So you know what? Boom. I just took on two responsibilities. Simple as that. But the action you're going to take most commonly is getting into squabbles. So when you get into a squabble, you are going to challenge the player on your right to try and earn grown-up points. So you will say, all right, I can beat you in time. I have more time than you. And I'm going to set down a card. Now, the person to my right can either say, yep, you have more time, in which case I would take this card, I would put it in front of me, and that is one grown-up point. I am one twelfth of the way to winning the game. Or they will say, no, I'm going to squabble with you, in which case they would play down a card as well. But if they do that, then the person to their right will also have the opportunity to potentially squabble if they want to. So they say, you know what, I, mean, I, I got some good time, so maybe I'll throw down a card. And then we'll say the fourth player does not want to squabble. So we have a three-way squabble going on. We would reveal our cards. If you need to play a Unipegasaurus card, read the text on the card and do it as you see fit. So we'd all reveal it. And I have 
eight, but nine, because I have the daydream token. This person is clearly a moron and put a five out, even though they knew they were going to lose. And this person put a four out, so I have no idea what they were doing. So what would happen now is I would gain all three of these cards, and all three of these cards would count as daydream points. So in one turn, I just got one-fourth of the points I need to win the game. Anywho, you're going to continue to get until you get to 12 points, at which point whoever has the most points will win the game. Now, uh, I forgot to mention this, but if there's a tie in the squabble, whoever was the challenger, or excuse me, whoever uh, laid down the challenge is the person who breaks the tie. And, and if it's not, it's the person closest to the lead player. If, if Say, for instance, if you have a multi-person squabble. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do inside of Pretending to Grown Up. Alrighty then, Pretending to Grown Up from Jason Anarchy Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, two to four players, or er, restricted player count. I also liked it best at three or four players, preferably four players, because then you can get multi-person squabbles going on, and that just makes things a little bit more interesting, in my personal opinion. Also, this game has a lot of luck in the game. If you get no Unipegasaurus cards, well, then you're going to be at a disadvantage than someone else. If you get all good cards, you don't get any of those crummy cards, then you're going to have an advantage over other people at the table. There's a lot of luck in the draw in this game, especially if you're playing with the uh, the guest artist cards, because some of those guest artist cards are absolutely god-awful cards, like 102 and stuff like that. It's like, who would ever want this card? Uh, but I guess you could use it for bluffing or something like that. But I'll talk more about that in the pros. Next con I have with this game, and it's kind of a weird con, is that it says it's 30 minutes on the box. That is a lie. That is a flat-out lie. This game will not take you longer than 15 to 20 minutes to play, especially if you're playing with three or four players. Unless you are sitting there reading every inch of flavor text and vividly describing exactly what is happening on the cards as you talk about your feelings, uh, this is not going to take 30 minutes. It is a very short game. I'll go back to the example I said. In a three or four player game, if you have a squabble with someone and one person wins, which will always happen, then that person gets three or four cards and you only need 12 cards to win the game. So yeah, it is a very short game and the rounds are going to go by lightning quick. Now that being said, I love short games, but it is still something that I did want to mention. Don't go into this expecting it to be heavier than it is because it is 30 minutes. Any other cons that I have with the game? You know, the biggest con, honestly, is that this is an incredibly light game. Now, they did do some things to try to bump up the gaminess. There's, like, this bluffing aspect, and there's the Daydream token, and there's the Unipegasaurus cards to try to, you know, make it a little bit more gamey. But at its core, this is an incredibly light, incredibly simple game, and I worry that... The target market for this game, based on its gameplay, is the family game market. And by saying that it's ages 14 plus, it's going to scare away the family market. Not to mention that it is kind of an adult content. Now that being said, it's not like dirty, inappropriate adult content. It's just, it's more, how do I put this? It's like the same reason why your 7 year old would not want to watch reruns of Seinfeld. It's not necessarily that it's an incredibly inappropriate show. It's the show is just not aimed at the kids and that's how I feel about this game. Now moving on to the pros, this game is not for me and I want to get that out there. This game is a little bit too light for me. Now that being said, I do like the artwork and I do like the sense of humor in the game and I think they both hit. Now I have never read the webcomic so I have no grounds, no basis to start off with, no preconceived biases and I still like the artwork and I still like the humor. Uh, I liked how simple the game was. It's very easy to learn. It's very easy to teach. It's the kind of game where you can have it set up and explained in about two to three minutes, which is always a good thing. I liked the simplicity of the game. You know, for how light this game is, it doesn't needlessly complicate aspects of the game. And I enjoy that. I like how the squabble system works. I like the flavor text in the card. I like the fact that they tried to make the cards somewhat thematic. Like it's, it's like, oh, this card should give you a lot of time based on what the card is or this this card should give you a lot of money. Like, oh, you wore the same clothes for two days in a row. Yeah, you, you saved a little bit of money. So now this is a high money card. So there are some little aspects like that that I like about the game. Also, there is that little bluffing aspect in the game. Now, the rules, they make it like it's a big deal. It's not really that big of a deal unless you're playing... Yeah, it, most of the time, it's not that big of a deal, the bluffing aspect. But it is there, and I do like it. And I think that's an interesting twist, especially for non-gamers. I think they're really going to enjoy that little bluffing aspect there as well. And the biggest group of people that I could recommend this to are the kind of people that get together with other couples and socialize and play games, but the socializing takes precedence over the gaming. Now, for me personally, when I play games, everyone's there 
for the gaming. You know, yes, we enjoy each other's company. Yes, we're friends. Yes, we enjoy talking as long as people aren't explaining rules. But we're not that we would not be there otherwise. But the game is bringing us in. This is more like the kind of game that you would play with people when you want to be with those people and have some secondary thing you are doing in the background and you just don't want to sit there and watch TV. I feel like this is a good couple get-together game. I feel like this is a gateway game, absolutely a light gateway game, so that could potentially work for that. I feel like this would be a fantastic family game, especially if your younger kids like the... Uh, like the theme, like the artwork, get a chuckle out of the artwork and stuff like that. Because the game itself, I think, could easily be played by a 7 or 8 year old, no problem. Because there's nothing complicated in the game at all. There's only three actions you can take. That being said, pretending to grow up is not for me. It's just not my style of game. But I did enjoy my time with the game. And I can recommend it for people who do like lighter experiences. Maybe like the webcomic and are looking to get in getting into gaming those type of people i can recommend this game for so that is pretending to grown up from jason anarchy games not a bad game just not a game generally for me if you enjoyed this video please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know pretending to grown up have you ever read the comic should i read the comic i kind of like the sense of humor in the cards and in the artwork and all that so i think i actually might go back and check out the comic but let me know in the comments below have you checked it out and as always thanks for your time youtube